I'm going to leave a link in the description, and I want you to go watch it. It's going to take some time for you to watch the entire thing, but I want you to understand exactly what I'm about to talk about. I'm not great with technology, as you can probably tell. I've, uh, I've not kept up with it for a long time. I didn't really care to. But uh, I'm going to start learning soon, so maybe I can make a better presentation for you. But the video that I'm linking in the description is an hour and 22 minutes long. I know most people don't have the time or the attention span in combination to be able to actually go and watch that entire hour. But please do. Please watch that entire hour and 22 minute video. Sit there and watch it. And imagine yourself as a 10 year old kid in a classroom with a bunch of other 10 year old kids. Some of you may like, some of them may be dick bags. But right then and there, you kiddos and your teacher have no one else to be with to comfort you and to take care of you but each other. while a lunatic is killing your classmates and other teachers. And I want you to watch that entire video. And I want you to think of nothing but being back in your elementary school classroom. And think about what it would be like if that murderous bastard was in your school when you were a kid while you watched that video. These police stood by and allowed a murderer to carry on killing children and teachers. And not only did they stand by and allow it, they actively took steps to protect the murderer from other people who were willing to go and try to stop him unarmed. They tasered and pepper sprayed unarmed parents over half an hour after the police arrived. because the police weren't going in there because they were too interested in protecting this killer. I don't care if they were given orders to stand down or not. Just following orders doesn't work. That's not a valid excuse for doing things that are that morally reprehensible. We established that in the middle of the 20th century. Just following orders is no excuse for being that much of a douchebag. And you don't have to like me saying that you don't have to like the language that I use, and I don't have to care. And you don't have to like that I'm talking about these cops this way because you have some kind of respect for the police that I just flat don't anymore. I don't care what you think of me. I want you to look at those cops and then I want you to look at yourself in the mirror and I want you to ask yourself, would you have been able to follow that order to stand down while those children were murdered? 
or would you have been driven to go and try to save those children? Or would you have been the coward fat cop that turned his back and ran at the first sign of trouble? You see, the police have no duty to protect you under the law. This has been decided multiple times by multiple courts, including in the most famous or infamous case of Gonzalez versus Castle Rock. The police don't even have a duty to enforce a restraining order against someone who is actively harming you at the time that you call 911. They have no duty to respond by law. Their only duty is to serve and protect their political masters in their respective jurisdictions. Again, you don't have to believe my word for it. Go and read the Castle Rock v. Gonzalez decision. There's also several others. You can check out the one about the uh, New York City subway cops who locked themselves inside the uh, security booth while a man was almost stabbed to death. That's an interesting case. And to those people who are out there who are calling for gun bans, remember, the only people that you want to have those guns are those same police who will do nothing to stop a murderer killing your children. Those police had the very guns you think they should have. And you think they alone should have them. And yet they did nothing. More than a dozen police officers showed up and none of them did anything for over an hour while children and teachers were being killed. Although Several of them did manage to force to the ground and disarm and handcuff and remove one of their fellow officers who was there trying to go in and save his wife, who was one of the teachers, who bled out in the ambulance after being shot over an hour earlier. These police don't care about you. They only care about following orders, and that's a bad sign. That's a sign that we're going down a very bad road. And that road leads to what happened in Poland with Reserve Police Battalion 101. And if you don't know what they are, and you don't know their story, go and read Christopher Browning's Ordinary Men. These police actively harmed innocent people trying to save innocent children from a violent, mass murdering psychopath. These police have no conscience anymore. And these same police who sat there and protected a murderer as he killed children will be the police that kick in your door to take your guns. At 4.30 in the morning, when you and your whole family is asleep, and they will kill your dog and anybody else that gets in their way. And if you awaken to that sound of your door being breached, thinking that you're having a burglary, and you respond to them because you don't know that they're police, think that it's a robbery, guess what? They're going to kill you. And oh, by the way, anyone else that, get, else that gets in their path. And then, when that's over, they will plead to the court, or they will say to the public, we investigated ourselves and found that we did nothing wrong. We were just doing our jobs. We were just following orders. And anybody who tries to sue them, They will say, 
we were following orders and we have no duty to protect. We were simply there to do the one job that we're supposed to do, and that's to enforce the law and the will of our political masters. That is what they will say. And they will say that sitting there looking at the pictures of your corpse up on the evidence board. They have no conscience. They do not care anymore. When people say police reform, a lot of what they mean, generally, is because they think the police are racist. No. The police have no accountability. They have something called qualified immunity. And politicians and judges have something similar called sovereign immunity. What this means is government has given itself immunity from charges and lawsuits for violating your rights, doing you harm, or killing you. These police allowed children to be slaughtered and helped to protect a killer. And people still want to tell me to back the blue. And the other side still wants to tell me that I don't need an AR-15. Well, guess what? There are 400 plus million people in the United States of America and there are more than 500 million firearms legally owned by American citizens, not counting the ones that are in the hands of the government and not counting the ones that are illegally owned in the hands of gang members and cartels and also other members of the government. If you think that one more gun control law is gonna solve this problem, you have another thing coming. This problem is societal. It has a lot to do with these young males being drugged from the time that they're boys in schools with all of these head meds, Ritalin, Adderall, other amphetamines. And being raised in single mother homes and going to schools that are run entirely by women and having no decent male role models to show them how to be as they grow into a man. And so they don't. They grow up angry. They grow up drugged up. And they grow up stupid and they grow up crazy. The simple fact is, it's a miracle of all miracles that we're not having more of these things happen. That's the sad state of affairs in this country now. Because I remember when these things didn't happen. I remember when school shootings weren't a thing. Then again, I also remember a time when the first few school shooters we had, the FBI didn't know their names. But all of the recent ones, the police, and in most cases the FBI, have known their names. Same thing with the other mass shooters like the guy in Vegas, and the one who shot up the Pulse nightclub, and the ones who shot up San Bernardino. They were all known to the FBI. The simple fact is, the FBI is another law enforcement agency that is allowing these things to happen. And then, the politicians get to go out there and use this for propaganda for their election campaigns. The fact is, all of this is being allowed to happen and this chaos is being allowed to ensue in order to convince you to give your rights up to the government and to give the government more power over your life.
safety is the excuse for tyranny. We've seen it all before. Don't let these bastards convince you that they have your best interest at heart because they don't have a heart and they definitely don't have your best interest in mind. They have their control, their power, and their money in mind. And that power and control is even more important because that's how they get the money. And if you don't believe me, go and look at Dan Crenshaw's wealth since he became a Congress dick. Go and look at Lauren Boebert's. Go and look at Nancy Pelosi's. Go and look at Mitch McConnell's. Go look at Dianne Feinstein's entire family. Oh yeah. And then go look at Hunter Biden and his daddy Joe doing business in Ukraine and China. Go and check out Trump's finances. See how he was after he got through being president for four years. Oh, and if you go and look through the Bush family and the Clintons, you'll have a field day with their finances. These people want the chaos because they want the control. And the person they want to control is you.